The Race Problem Money, inspired by Dr. Julie Seaton, written and published by Audible Aria. First, money. Before someone can truly understand what money means, they must first grasp the deeper principles of life and how life is expressed in the world around them. In ancient times, people believed that life consisted of two opposing forces, spirit and matter. Spirit was seen as a higher, good force, while matter was considered lower and often associated with evil. These two forces were thought to be in constant conflict with each other. The old civilization viewed matter as the servant of spirit, always separated from and subordinate to it, and in a perpetual state of conflict. In their worldview, matter and physical substance were seen as evil, trapped in bondage and unchanging. Matter was always considered just matter, never evolving into anything better. On the other hand, spirit was seen as a superior, finer force that was always good, free and an expression of goodness. People believed that human life was influenced by these two forces and a person's freedom or bondage depended on which force they aligned themselves with. If they followed the spirit, they were free and good, but if they followed matter, they were bound and in a state of conflict. Under these interpretations of life, people started to feel increasingly separated and confused, leading them further away from the real truth. As long as people viewed matter as something evil that should be condemned, rejected and despised, they couldn't find dignity in anything related to the physical world. This attitude meant that those who were too immature to reject matter, or those who were too advanced to reject it, faced condemnation. With this belief in their minds and the idea of duality in their hearts, ancient civilizations struggled. They lived their lives feeling crushed by a law they had created for themselves. They tried their best to be loyal to a false ideal, causing generation after generation to be born and die while fighting against the physical things in their world and battling their own inner desires. This mindset caused ancient civilizations to struggle feeling crushed by their own beliefs. They lived their lives trying to be true to a false idea, causing each generation to fight against the world around them and their own desires. Instead of finding peace and understanding, they were trapped in a cycle of conflict and confusion, unable to see the true nature of life. Centuries went by and humanity reached a peak of division. Some people worshipped the physical world and were trapped by it, while others worshipped a formless, unmanifested God. At this critical moment, Jesus Christ was born. He brought a message that revealed the true nature of life, showing the unity of spirit and matter. Jesus introduced a new idea that connected the physical and the spiritual worlds. He made it clear with his words, saying, All that my Father has is mine, and I and my Father are one. This meant that there was no separation between the physical and spiritual realms. He brought this message to a world deeply entrenched in the old belief of separation. Although only the most enlightened minds fully grasped his message, he impressed it upon the hearts of many. For 2,000 years, his message of unity has gradually spread through humanity's collective mind. In the modern world of the 20th century, people have started to understand and interpret his teachings more completely. Jesus shared this message with a world stuck in old ways of thinking. Although only a few truly understood him at first, many people felt the impact of his words. Over the next 2,000 years, his teachings slowly influenced humanity. By the 20th century, people began to understand his message of unity better. Jesus did not see a difference between things that have a physical form and things that are formless. He said, whatever you ask for, believing, you will receive. He understood that God, his Father, was everything and that God used himself to create the world. Jesus knew that everything belonged to God and that people lived in a world made of God's substance. Whatever people wanted or needed, they only had to ask and they would receive to seek and they would find. There is no record of Jesus ever breaking the connection between the spiritual mind and the spiritual form. He could tap into higher spiritual energies, turning water into wine, 
He understood the higher laws of the unmanifested world and used them to feed a multitude and even to find money in a fish's mouth. From the invisible realm of spiritual awareness, he could create visible, tangible things. When he touched something, it became real and useful. With this unparalleled example of Christ's message, the new civilization has awakened to a higher understanding of supply and money. This new perspective sees supply and money as forms created by humanity from an unlimited spiritual substance. We now understand that all physical phenomena are actually spiritual arrangements within human consciousness. Everything the world considers as matter is merely an emanation from a single, infinite substance. In truth, the finite world is only a symbol of the infinite. The driving force behind creating these forms is desire. When we desire something and think about it, we bring it into existence. Desire itself is a sign that fulfillment is possible. Desire is what powers this creation. When we want something and think about it, we make it happen. Our desires are like a prediction that what we want will come true. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Money is only a symbol of race desire and a medium of exchange, which is used to give each life the fullest expression objectively of its subjective self. As humanity evolved, people and groups began to trade possessions in a fair way. One person would give something they had in exchange for something they didn't have. They discovered that those with the most desires ended up with the most possessions, or symbols of their desires. This meant that they had the most to trade. This led to the development of barter, trade and competition. For example, if one tribe had many sheep and another had many cattle, they could trade if they desired what the other had. If someone valued two cattle more than four sheep, they would trade accordingly, fulfilling their desires and acquiring the cattle. As human desires grew stronger, and people learned better ways to fulfill these desires, many became focused solely on accumulating material possessions. They forgot that their souls also had other desires that needed to be expressed as part of their growth. This is similar to the story of the rich man who said, I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones to store all my goods. Then I will say to myself, You have plenty of goods stored up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your soul will be required of you. Then who will get what you have prepared? This shows that those who only gather material wealth without being rich in spiritual matters will eventually realize the emptiness of their pursuits. As people's desires grew, they got better at fulfilling them, and many focused only on getting material things. They ignored that their souls had other needs that also needed attention. This is like the rich man who planned to store all his goods and live a carefree life, thinking he had everything he needed. But God reminded him that his soul was more important, and he had neglected it. This teaches us that focusing only on material wealth is not enough. We need to pay attention to our spiritual needs as well. Eventually, everyone will realize that they desire more than just material things. When people reach a point where material things lose their importance, those purely physical pleasures will become meaningless, like dust and ashes. These material things will no longer satisfy, and the soul will crave higher forms of fulfillment. Over the centuries, human desires have become more refined and the ways to express these desires have evolved. Nowadays, the way people represent their desires for material things has become more focused and sophisticated. In the past, people bartered goods like cattle, gems, servants and slaves. Today, all human desires among advanced societies are summed up and symbolized by gold, silver and paper money. Money has become the way to exchange and manifest these desires. It serves as a link between the invisible spirit and the visible world. With money, people can bring their desires into physical reality. Money is simply a tool that connects the mind and the physical form, a divine substance used by humans. It is neither good nor bad, neither high nor low. It simply exists as a means of exchange and fulfillment. Money connects the spiritual mind with the physical world, 
allowing people to turn their desires into reality. It is a tool that is neither inherently good nor bad. It just exists to help people exchange value and achieve their goals. Second, how to breathe in consciousness. Many people understand their dreams and desires perfectly in their minds long before they make them a reality. They have hoped, prayed, aspired and believed, but still they do not see their hopes come true. The reason for this is clear. They are living with conflicting thoughts instead of unified thinking. One day, they think about wealth, success, and abundance, but the next day, they focus on lack and limitation. They might have faith for an hour and then spend the next hour in doubt and fear. This constant shift between positive and negative thoughts is like planting two different kinds of seeds in a garden. As a result, they end up with a mixed harvest that reflects their inconsistent thinking. They might feel confident for a while, but then start to doubt and feel afraid. This back-and-forth thinking is like planting both good and bad seeds in a garden. So, when it's time to harvest, they get a mix of good and bad results, because their thoughts were not focused and unified. To achieve wealth, we must understand that we receive in life what we give out. This means the thoughts we focus on shape our reality. If we constantly think about doubt and fear, these thoughts become strong and shape our lives, Merely wishing for wealth and success without strong belief and action won't bring them to us. There's a saying that not everyone who talks about faith will achieve it. This reminds us that we must back up our words with actions. Just as in farming, what we sow in the fields determines what we harvest. As Arnold put it, sesame seeds produce sesame plants, and corn seeds grow into corn. Therefore, the first step towards wealth is acknowledging and believing in its possibility. Simply wanting wealth isn't enough. We must actively work towards it and cultivate the right mindset and actions to make it a reality. Think of thoughts as streams flowing in different directions. Each thought flows in its own path. If our mind is completely focused on wealth, success and abundance, there is no space left for lesser things to take root. Our mind needs to learn to see abundance everywhere. In reality, there is no shortage in the universe. The idea of scarcity exists only in the minds of people. Only humans understand and practice the concept of saving and economizing resources. But this awareness is limited to a certain stage of understanding. Humans are unique because they can create things that are personal to them. Therefore, we should believe that humans establish their own rules. They can either connect with or separate themselves from their source of abundance and creation. Wealth is a fundamental aspect of life, existing as a substance that can be attracted by anyone who acknowledges it and asks for it. This substance is singular, and humans perceive it differently based on their understanding. We have the ability to channel this substance into our immediate needs or future aspirations. Before anything becomes real in the physical world, it first takes shape in our thoughts. We can envision and create all kinds of things like homes, businesses, food, shoes, travel and education mentally before they manifest in reality. When we create these things in our minds with clarity and belief, they eventually materialize as success and fulfillment in our lives. When a person aligns with their inner principles, they can command clarity of thought or a clear direction in life. The great universal life force, often referred to as God, treats everyone equally. Jesus once said, Ask and you shall receive, leaving the choice and command up to us. The universal substance which everything is made of responds to our authority. There is a connection between our commands and the intelligent energy at the atomic level. The universal mind supports our desires and assists in achieving and maintaining what we seek. Ultimately, we are the ones responsible for losing or keeping what we have. Once we grasp this law, we need to practice it every day in our lives. First we conceive the idea and then shape it into a clear thought. Simply having the idea gives us a sense of what could be, but when we can transform it into a detailed and unwavering thought and remain committed to this vision, we begin the journey towards making it real. This commitment brings our desired outcome into our reality. In this realm where imagination becomes reality, we adopt the innocence and faith of children who are considered great in spiritual terms.
In our minds, we must vividly picture exactly what we desire, maintaining this perfect image in our consciousness. Everyone has a clear idea of what they desire in life. Each person holds a divine vision they strive to achieve. Whatever our goals are, we learn to instantly focus our mind on them and always see them as perfect and achievable. Creating this vision in our consciousness happens gradually, especially if our minds aren't used to maintaining such clear images. Old patterns of negative thinking may keep coming back, disrupting our progress. To overcome this, we must consistently replace these negative thoughts with the perfected vision of what we truly want to experience. Every moment of our lives, we are actively shaping our reality through our thoughts. We are constantly creating either the outcomes we desire or those we don't want. A progressive society understands the mistake of focusing on negative thoughts, as they only bring more limitations when they materialize. Therefore, it's crucial to keep our focus firmly on positive visions and goals, ensuring that our thoughts align with the future we wish to manifest. This conscious effort shapes our experiences and leads us towards fulfillment and success. Some people have minds filled with negative thoughts. They constantly think about poverty, bad luck, run-down homes, misfortune, doubt and fear. These thoughts dominate their consciousness every day and they have given them so much attention that they've become real in their lives. When we start creating in our minds, our initial thoughts might be rough and imperfect, similar to how an artist's early sketches can be. However, for those who truly grasp the vision and understand the principles at play, there's no looking back and no room for failure. By firmly holding on to a vision with unwavering faith and keeping it vivid in our thoughts, anyone can transform their surroundings. By persistently maintaining this vision in our consciousness, the universal substance, the fundamental building blocks of reality, will inevitably manifest it in our physical environment. Therefore, through persistent belief and clear visualization, we have the power to reshape our reality and bring about the new circumstances we desire, transcending the limitations of our past experiences. When we consistently focus on and imagine something, it will eventually materialize. Our thoughts become reality, and this is our divine ability to create, which only we can limit. This journey is the path of personal growth, leading us from our origins and back again. It's a path guided by the divine, connecting our spiritual thoughts to tangible forms. Once we understand this process, we can begin creating wealth, success, money or anything else we desire. These manifestations arise from the limitless substance of the universe and stay with us. Around us, countless unseen opportunities and connections will emerge, linking us to abundant resources. New friendships, opportunities, hopes and dreams will align with the universal abundance. As we harness the creative power within our minds, we can shape the vast emptiness of space into countless forms of human needs, all in perfect harmony. This power allows us to draw everything we need into our lives, transforming our reality in alignment with our highest aspirations. Third, why we do not have money. The reason we might not have money is because at some point in our journey, we haven't fully grasped how money works. Everything in life follows certain rules, and to thrive, we need to understand these rules. Without understanding them, we're just skimming the surface of life, not fully experiencing it. Jesus once said that every detail of the law is important and won't be ignored. He also said he didn't come to break the law, but to complete it. Human beings can only achieve their desires when they understand and align their own life's rules with the universal laws that govern everything. In life, similar things attract each other, just as you can't pick grapes from thorn bushes. Some people are wealthy while others are poor because of the laws they follow in their lives, not by random chance, as many think. Poverty and wealth aren't random events. They are conditions we create in our minds. Modern society understands that everything external originates from our internal thoughts and beliefs. What we believe inside shapes what we see outside. Poverty reflects a certain state of mind, while wealth reflects another. 
If we feel lack inside, we'll experience it outside. If we feel abundant inside, we'll see abundance in our lives. In life, similar things attract each other, just as you can't pick grapes from thorn bushes. Some people are wealthy, while others are poor because of the laws they follow in their lives, not by random chance as many think. Poverty and wealth aren't random events. They are conditions we create in our minds. Modern society understands that everything external originates from our internal thoughts and beliefs. What we believe inside shapes what we see outside. Poverty reflects a certain state of mind, while wealth reflects another. If we feel lack inside, we'll experience it outside. If we feel abundant inside, we'll see abundance in our lives. In the past, people believed that external conditions were solely caused by external actions. They thought poverty was the opposite of wealth, caused by the rich hoarding resources from the poor. This belief blocked individuals from achieving their goals, leading to conflict and blame. This misunderstanding led to historical oppression and violence. Understanding the true relationship between our thoughts and external reality helps us create a better world, free from false blame and conflict, and fosters a society where everyone can achieve their fullest potential. In today's world, our awareness has expanded, and people now see life as a whole, not just its parts. Many old beliefs are fading away, revealing the deeper workings of universal laws in human destinies. Life is like a school, with each person in their own grade. Poverty is a lesson in one grade, just as wealth is a lesson in another. There are millions of people today who are poor because they haven't yet developed the ability to overcome scarcity. For those struggling with poverty, the first step is to learn how to secure their needs. This learning process isn't quick. It involves a gradual awakening that neither individuals nor societies can rush. Once people grasp this lesson, they move to the next stage, where they learn how to manage money. Meanwhile, others take their place, still learning the lessons they've left behind. Jesus recognized this cycle when he said, the poor you will always have with you. Modern society understands that there will always be individuals who, due to their current level of understanding and development, experience poverty. It's seen as a natural phase that continues until they evolve and gain greater understanding. We observe daily that simply providing material wealth to those in poverty isn't enough to change their circumstances fundamentally. True change comes when individuals experience a deeper realization within themselves. Those who understand life can see the root causes of poverty clearly. They recognize that as long as there are people on earth, some will struggle to meet their basic needs, because deep within them there lies a mindset and understanding that keeps them in a state of lack and want. Another reason for poverty is the flawed education systems of the past. Instead of advancing human progress, traditional teachings have often kept people trapped in limitations. For centuries, the church wielded significant influence over the minds of many, promoting the idea of poverty as a virtue. It portrayed Christ as a figure of suffering and poverty, distorting the true essence of his teachings and steering people away from paths of self-realization and empowerment. In addition to the idealization of poverty through the image of Christ, the Church also introduced a dualistic worldview, depicting a powerful God and a malevolent devil. It attributed blessings and abundance to God while associating lack and suffering with the devil. This belief system became deeply ingrained in society, shaping how people perceived their own capabilities and possibilities. The old beliefs were so deeply rooted that individuals and communities unknowingly perpetuated their own hardships. They accepted poverty as a spiritual state and believed that material wealth was contrary to spiritual enlightenment. They lived with the hope that their suffering would earn them rewards in an afterlife, as taught by St. Paul. These outdated beliefs created a collective consciousness of poverty and limitation influencing people to project these conditions into their own lives. Breaking free from these mental chains required a shift in thinking, 
away from dualism and toward a more empowering understanding of personal potential and spiritual fulfillment. For centuries, old ideas and interpretations controlled the minds of many people, keeping them tightly bound. Surprisingly, even in today's enlightened age, there are still many who cling to these outdated beliefs, living in poverty and despair. Some individuals hold on to these beliefs due to religious teachings and a lack of self-reflection. They believe they are destined to be poor, refusing to explore their own potential or understand the laws of abundance. Another common belief is the idea of inheritance. People think they are born into poverty and will remain poor indefinitely. However, this is only true as long as they don't learn how to attract wealth and abundance into their lives. While some remain stuck in these old ways of thinking, many others are awakening to new possibilities. They are progressing through their personal growth journey and are ready to embrace new ways of living and thinking. Each person has the power to change their circumstances by understanding and applying universal laws. However, without this awareness, they may continue to accept their current situation as unchangeable, not realizing the potential for freedom within themselves. In modern times, a new wave of thinking is emerging. Millions of people are embracing new ideas and laws that empower them to create positive changes in their lives and surroundings. This shift marks a transition towards greater understanding and prosperity for those who are open to it. Our situation of poverty persists only as long as we continue to align ourselves with the beliefs and behaviours that perpetuate it. Just like how we can plan and construct a house or organise a city, we can also plan for success, money and abundance in a systematic way. When we activate the laws that attract abundance, supply will naturally come to us. This is a universal principle. However, as a society, we need to educate ourselves about these laws and gradually move away from old-fashioned ideas and habits that keep us stuck in poverty. Poverty and wealth are outcomes of our inner thoughts and feelings, and only when we change our mindset will our external circumstances change. Certain immature states of mind, such as worry, hate, fear, anxiety and condemnation, create conditions that lead to physical poverty. Wherever we focus our thoughts and energy, material resources will gather around us. A mind that has deeply rooted beliefs in poverty and reinforces them with negative emotions will continue to experience poverty. Our environment reflects our inner state. Someone in a breadline or sleeping on park benches isn't there solely due to external circumstances, but because their own misunderstanding or misuse of universal laws has led them there. Lack will persist only as long as we harbour thoughts and beliefs that reinforce it. To achieve financial stability, wealth and freedom, we must evolve our thoughts and emotions beyond these limiting beliefs ingrained in our minds and hearts. True change begins within ourselves, by nurturing a mindset and emotions that attract abundance and prosperity, thereby transforming our external reality. Our poverty exists because we lack the knowledge and understanding to change it. We remain in poverty because we are ignorant, weak, passive or superstitious. We haven't yet realised our own potential to transform our lives by aligning with higher laws of existence. To break free from poverty, we must first educate ourselves and gain awareness. We need to overcome our inertia and the limitations imposed by our beliefs. By acknowledging and harnessing our inner strength and divine potential, we can gradually reshape our physical circumstances. This process involves continuously expanding our awareness and belief in our ability to create positive change. It requires us to recognize and utilize our inherent power to manifest a better life. As we grow in understanding and apply these principles, we can effectively shift from poverty towards abundance and fulfillment. Fourth, why do we want money? Humanity desires money because, at this stage of our evolution, money serves as a means to fulfill our hidden ambitions and dreams. Every moment, our inner thoughts and desires strive to manifest outwardly, and money acts as the tool through which specific human desires can take shape in the physical world. Money enables us to materialize our ideas into tangible forms. It empowers us to shape our environment according to our mental and spiritual growth. With money, 
we can transcend limitations imposed by limited understanding and progress towards new horizons that align with our expanding ideas of personal development. Society values money because it allows us to meet our needs and drive forward material progress. Without money, many of our innovative ideas and aspirations for civilization would remain unfulfilled. Money is crucial for bringing these ideas into practical use, thereby advancing human understanding and capability. Civilization itself progresses in proportion to how effectively it utilizes higher concepts and revelations. For instance, the colossal ships navigating the oceans and the modern airplanes soaring through the skies are testament to our ability to merge advanced thought with practical form made possible by abundant resources. Humans have an innate drive to conquer nature and transform ideas into reality, and money facilitates this process. The transformation of once barren lands into flourishing mines and gardens illustrates how financial resources can bring about material freedom and progress. Furthermore, the impressive libraries and art galleries throughout history exemplify how money allows us to preserve and showcase the creative expressions of human consciousness. These cultural treasures stand as tangible embodiments of our collective aspirations and intellectual achievements. In today's world, there is a divine impulse driving humanity to express our latent ideas and aspirations through tangible forms. Money serves as the vital bridge between our inner aspirations and their outward manifestation, propelling us towards greater cultural, technological and societal advancements. We ask for money and insist upon it because we believe it is rightfully ours as part of a larger plan for the world. In the presence of abundant resources, where each person is seen as divine, humanity has come to understand the command to ask and you shall receive. Despite past societies dulling our ears to this truth out of ignorance, there has always been an inner voice reminding us of our inherent right to fully express ourselves whenever we choose. Every deep state of consciousness within us yearns to be manifested, and those who are rich in inner life will naturally seek to express and embody their richness in various ways. Money becomes intertwined with our desires because it is a manifestation of God, allowing us to expand our personal consciousness into the world. No person lives or dies in isolation. We are all part of the universal life and interconnected with everything that exists. In today's world, those who have plenty of money and live their desired lives to the fullest are simultaneously supporting countless other lives, sheltering and nurturing them towards evolution. People grow into the greatness of their aspirations with the support of financial means. Sometimes, however, money shelters those who misuse it. Yet the issue lies not with money itself, but with the consciousness of those who misuse it at that stage of their soul's development. We all desire money because it allows us to have more opportunities in life. Each person has a unique essence that drives them to express themselves and fulfill their potential. This inner drive, which originates deep within us, compels us to seek out ways to harness our hidden abilities and strengths. Money itself doesn't change who we are. Rather, it serves as a means for us to showcase our true selves to the world. As long as humanity exists, people will continue to seek, possess and utilise money because it is seen as a blessing from a higher power. Through money, individuals can manifest their inner divinity and create surroundings that reflect their deepest aspirations. It is through this process that people gradually transform into their best selves, living in harmony with their ideals and shaping a more fulfilling existence. Fifth, how to get money in the old thought method. In the old way of thinking, there are five methods to get money, and people use one or more of these methods at different times in their lives. However, they usually focus on one method more than the others, and this main method becomes their primary way to get money. These methods are, first, inheriting money, second, attracting it, third, marrying someone with money, fourth, working for it, and fifth, finding it. These methods are all practical and belong to a time focused on individual achievements. The first method is inheritance. If we are born into a wealthy family, we inherit the wealth of those who have passed away. 
We receive this through the power of our own desire. One person's soul had mastered wealth in a previous life, and we chose to be born at the right moment to benefit from it. In such cases, learning about money and how to earn it is not the lesson our soul needs in this life. Instead, we came to learn something else, like love, justice, or how to use wealth responsibly. This method affects many lives and is one of the easiest ways to get money. The second method is attraction, which happens to people who have completed the stage of working hard but haven't yet learned how to actively create wealth for themselves. Attraction comes after work and is one of the easiest ways to get money. Many people reach this stage where their work helps them attract the support and cooperation of those who are already wealthy. There are two types of ownership, passive and active. People who attract wealth fall under passive ownership. They use things that belong to others, but at any time, the real owners can take their things back. So their lives are full of ups and downs. They might have wealth one day and lose it the next, until they learn how to actively create and keep their own wealth. The third method, marrying for money, is very common and widespread. Some people see it as a noble pursuit. For example, a bored nobleman might marry the wealthy daughter of a commoner, securing wealth without any effort. This was a common goal in old societies. Women were often taught to marry for financial security and lived under passive ownership, relying on their husband's wealth. The history of alimony and divorce shows how long this has been true. For centuries, women sold themselves to the highest bidder, giving up their body, mind and spirit for financial support. Marrying for money was, and still is, a main occupation for some people. It's not just women. Men also take advantage of this. Many people stay in unhappy marriages because it keeps them wealthy. Some are too ignorant, undeveloped or lazy to become independent. They complain about their misery but refuse to leave their old habits saying they cannot or will not. The new way of thinking understands that they feel trapped by their own choices and ideas, relying on material dependence for their personal growth. The fourth method is earning money by working and overcoming poverty through personal effort. This is the most common and difficult way to get money. However, it helps people grow and understand the law of abundance. Through the struggle to survive, people develop many hidden strengths. For those working hard, life may seem tough and sometimes not worth it, but this effort holds the potential for a deeper realisation and brings its own rewards. The fifth and least common method is finding money. Sometimes people find lost money just when they need it most. Some people have lived comfortably with the money they found, but this method is unreliable and only meets a temporary need. Begging is another way to get money, but it isn't a main method. Instead, it's a minor form of attraction. All these methods were part of the old way of thinking and won't work for those who don't gain a deeper understanding. We now have a broader perspective and greater understanding. The new society views these methods, inheritance, attraction, marriage, working for, and finding money, as just ways for people to fulfill their desires. In the past, people got money through these old methods and experienced loss, conflict, and struggle. However, the new generation is acquiring wealth through the same methods, but with a new understanding of the laws, leading to lasting wealth gained in harmony and peace, in the past, people dealt with two kinds of forces and had a world of both physical and mental power. They lived by separation and struggle. Since money was seen as material and wealth was associated with evil, there was little joy or peace even after acquiring it. If they inherited wealth, they feared losing it or worried it might go to others. If they worked for it, they were never sure their work and income would last always afraid of losing their job and money. If they attracted wealth, they feared losing the friend who helped them. If they found money, they never knew when they'd find more. If they married for money, they often faced so much disharmony that the wealth felt meaningless. Life was full of conflict, but from this struggle, a deeper understanding emerged and the truth became clear. The new society, with its fresh perspective on life, introduces new methods and better results. 
we start with understanding ourselves and connect this self-awareness with the universal energy. This links our lives to the universal law of abundance. Then we simply choose how this abundance will come to us. We can inherit wealth and use it to freely express our deepest desires. We can attract wealth and live in harmony with those who help us. We can marry for wealth and experience peace, power and love, creating a blissful life with another person. We can work for wealth, learning from the challenges and heartaches along the way. We can also find wealth, and whenever we deeply need it, we will find answers to our prayers. In the past, humanity struggled to understand the laws of nature, which seemed mysterious and difficult to decipher. Back then, people couldn't sail across oceans, dig tunnels through mountains or fly through the air. There were no pioneers like Burbank to teach them how to bend these natural laws to their will. As knowledge grew, so did our ability to innovate and create. Today our understanding has expanded, and we now explore the realms of psychological consciousness. Like modern-day pioneers, psychologists are uncovering unseen laws of the mind, unlocking new potentials and abilities for all of humanity. Nowadays, we understand that human consciousness is always connected with the consciousness of God or the universal mind. We believe that everything we possess in physical form first starts as a thought in our minds. Each person has their own consciousness, and within it lies a divine law of transfer. This means that no one needs to live in lack or need anymore once they grasp this concept. Once someone understands this law, their abundance is only limited by their ability to work with this law effectively. If something isn't within our awareness, we don't perceive it as existing. Therefore, we can't hold thoughts of scarcity and thoughts of wealth simultaneously. To overcome scarcity, all we need to do is cultivate a mindset that is focused on abundance. We achieve wealth not through struggle or force, but by internalizing this understanding and applying it to ourselves. This realization and the actualization of wealth will persist as long as we honor the higher laws of our own being. Discovering psychiatry rather than exertion is the innovative approach of our time. With this approach, people are transforming their old beliefs of scarcity and discovering new sources of strength. They attain wealth and maintain it because it originates from their own thoughts projected into reality through their consciousness. The fundamental principle of the new society is creating in consciousness. Once individuals can shape their environment mentally, it won't be long before it materializes around them. This environment will evolve alongside their growing wisdom, becoming increasingly perfect. Simply understanding the law, putting it into practice, living in harmony with life and its laws, completes the process. He who knows the law and abides comes into the protection of the law and becomes one with an abundance of supply on every plane, an abundance which no one can limit but himself. Sixth, how to use money. Once people have mastered the law of acquiring money or material freedom, there's another step to take. It's about how we use money and the principle of distributing what it can create in a way that's balanced and constructive. In this new era, civilization is delving into the deeper psychology of human progress and teaching from profound laws of human development. Learning to earn money is just one lesson among many that we all go through. Beyond earning, the next challenge is learning how to effectively utilize and distribute what we create for ourselves. This aspect of our journey is crucial for our ongoing growth and development. There are countless people who haven't grasped how to acquire money and just as many who, after achieving wealth, haven't learned how to use it wisely, they're still inexperienced in handling their abundance. On the other hand, there are revered wealthy individuals in every society who use their riches for God, for others, and for themselves. Their monumental acts of kindness are evident every hour in the gratitude shown by those whose lives they've uplifted from hardship. These individuals are celebrated for their compassionate contributions to society. There are two main ways people handle money. One is personal and the other is universal. Everyone starts with the personal approach before understanding and transitioning into the universal one through a process called transmutation. 
Money allows people to develop themselves and initially, our focus is often on personal growth. At this stage, we prioritize our own needs and desires. Those who acquire money while primarily focused on themselves tend to use it for their own benefit and fulfillment. Jesus once said, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. He understood that a mind focused solely on material pursuits would struggle to achieve inner fulfillment. According to him, heaven is about inner peace and harmony. As he also said, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Jesus knew that true harmony comes when personal and universal laws are united. Selfishness creates disharmony because it emphasizes separation rather than unity. Those who possess wealth and use it only for their own gain are still learning important life lessons. Money becomes their teacher, influencing their lives based on how they use it. Through these experiences, they learn and ultimately discover solutions within the challenges they face. Jesus' teachings remind us that true fulfillment comes from aligning personal actions with universal principles, fostering harmony within oneself and with others. Each one of us has a single purpose in this world to express ourselves. Initially, our personal thoughts are often self-centered. We establish our own path of self-expression with the resources we have, and sometimes we compel others with less strong opinions to follow our lead. If we don't understand our own position in our minds, we risk being manipulated by those around us. When humanity hasn't fully grasped its own awareness, this manipulation can seem acceptable. However, through this constant conflict, our souls eventually awaken to the deeper truths of life and our higher selves. This awakening marks our first steps towards self-discovery and protection. Every person in the world is striving, whether they realize it or not, to become more and more of who they truly are. It doesn't matter what others think about how someone expresses themselves. The path someone chooses might seem inferior to those who have taken different routes, but for that individual, it is the right path. Through their chosen path, they grow and expand into a fuller version of themselves. Everything in the world is available for us to use in our journey. We can use as much or as little as we understand how to use. Sometimes, due to our lack of knowledge and selfishness, we may use things in ways that are harmful. In such cases, universal laws eventually correct these actions, although it may take time. As the saying goes, the mills of the gods grind slow, but they grind exceedingly small. Eventually, we face the consequences of our actions and settle our debts with ourselves. In life, similar things tend to come together. If we cause trouble, we'll face serious consequences. When people let themselves be taken advantage of beyond what they can handle emotionally, they have only themselves to blame. This is the only way they can discover the deeper aspects of their own consciousness. Personal experiences guide everyone from one situation to another. These experiences become so intertwined with others' experiences that all of humanity is connected by a single overarching principle. Everyone faces consequences and reaps rewards based on their own actions. Each person pursues what they need for their personal growth, driven by their desires. They are accountable to themselves and to God for their choices. At certain points in life, individuals may seek fulfillment through selfishness and by boosting their own egos. However, personal desires are often accompanied by pain, disappointment and the challenges of life. These difficulties serve as steps on the ladder that leads us beyond our old selves toward greater things. Each of these personal fulfillments represents branches on the tree of life, rooted in truth. Using money in a universal and truthful way includes finding personal satisfaction. It means prioritizing inner harmony and understanding within ourselves first. By doing so, external achievements naturally follow, guided by our strong and peaceful awareness. In using money wisely, we can fulfill all our desires completely and live joyfully while also helping others in need. Like a river that broadens as it approaches the ocean, our lives become expansive, strong and boundless. We can shine as beacons of guidance for those still seeking enlightenment. 
understanding that money holds great importance in society and mastering how to manage it effectively allows us to elevate our lives. By grasping the deeper principles of handling wealth and recognizing its higher purposes, we transform our lives into paths of peace, strength and wisdom. These paths can serve as examples for all humanity, guiding them towards their own fulfillment and realization. We have the ability to give generously to those who are in need, not everything we have, because that would leave us in need as well, but generously and without hesitation, giving abundantly. The new collective mindset of humanity is eager to learn these new teachings. Just as it quickly grasps how to overcome poverty, it can swiftly understand the higher, more universal ways to use the wealth it has accumulated. In the future, human civilization will live abundantly, like gods, with wealth so plentiful that there's no room for lack. People will truly believe and understand from their newfound wisdom. Everything my father has is mine, knowing that within themselves lies a paradise of fulfillment and contentment. Within ourselves, everything begins and ends. Wealth and success are like a powerful energy that everyone can sense and understand once they experience it. This is what money truly represents, as described by Dr. Julie Seaton. Her work is inspiring and enjoyable to read offering profound insights found in classic new thought books on prosperity. Dr. Seaton explores a wide range of topics, emphasizing that attracting money through the law of attraction is just a starting point, not the ultimate goal. She argues that there are higher levels of understanding and creating wealth beyond mere attraction. Her perspective suggests that true mastery involves continuous growth and development in how we manifest and utilize wealth in our lives. There are some important points to consider. Dr. Seaton emphasizes that you can achieve anything you desire, regardless of your current circumstances or background. Whether you were born into poverty or face challenges now, she argues that nothing is impossible. You have the power to envision a different reality for yourself. By honing your ability to visualize your true thoughts and desires, you can manifest them into reality. It's a guaranteed process. Dr. Seaton suggests that while material possessions are attainable through the law of attraction, there comes a point where you seek more than just material wealth. She advocates for creating and achieving anything you desire without letting self-doubt or excuses hinder you. It's about realizing your full potential and believing in your ability to create the life you want. You can achieve anything you want. It takes a leap of faith to believe this. But if you start cultivating a mindset focused on creating wealth through your own thoughts, you'll begin to see changes happening around you. I assure you, your current beliefs about what's possible are limiting you. You can achieve far more than you think. You can live in a bigger house, even a mansion. You can own a private jet, travel the world and find profound love. I want you to realize that all of this is within your reach including the financial means you need. Money plays a crucial role in life. It's like the lifeblood that drives the actions of the universe. Our journey in this life includes learning about money, and you're actively learning these lessons right now. It's a fundamental part of how everything operates, and understanding this can empower you to achieve your dreams. If you're facing challenges right now, it's part of your learning journey. Someday, when you look back, you'll realize how these struggles were necessary lessons. There's a process involved in achieving your desires. You have the power to create and possess anything you can imagine. The initial thought is crucial. You must believe in it wholeheartedly. Just like how an atom moves, your belief can start to shape your reality. When you firmly believe in something, it becomes a magnet that attracts positive changes in your life you'll harvest something wonderful as a result. I want to assure you that anything is possible. We can all evolve to a point where we effortlessly manifest our desires without even discussing money. It's achievable for you. I want you to understand this deeply. I envision everyone who hears this message becoming incredibly wealthy. I want you to experience such abundance that you're overwhelmed with possibilities and freedom. Believe in your dreams and trust that you have the ability to make them real. Thank you for listening.